Hello everyone. Uh, today I'd like to go over the age bridge uh, circuit operation. Uh, the reason I want to go over this is because because of the complexity of the circuit, some people have a hard time understanding why the circuit operates as the as it does. And so for this reason, again, that's why I'm going over how the H bridge uh, circuit actually works. Um, to start, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk first about the basic setup of an H bridge circuit. And for H bridge circuit, typically we have four switching circuits, S1 indicated here by the S's, S1, S2, S3, and S4. All right. And these are connected to VCC as shown here and ground as shown here. In the middle, we typically have some sort of load, and it's in this case, we have a motor. Now, the way this works is this. If the following switches are closed, S1 and S4, what happens is current leaves through VCC, heads through S1, through the motor in this direction, through S4, and then to ground. Okay, What this causes the motor to do then is turn in one direction. All right. Now, if we switch, if we close the following switches, which are S2 and S3, what happens then is current goes through to S3 here, through the motor in the opposite direction, through S3, and then through ground. And it causes the motor then to turn or switch directions or go in the opposite direction. Now, any other configuration of the switches being opens or open or closed will cause the uh, motor not to turn. OK, so these are the only two uh, that will cause the motor to turn. Now, we can actually build a an H bridge um, circuit by using a, a set of BJT transistors. Uh, in this case, we need both uh, NPNs and PNPs. And this is not these are not the uh, the schematics for BJT transistors, but they're more of just showing you the different uh, junctions, NPN junctions uh, within. And we're going to need this in order to explain why the circuit actually works. OK, so before we actually get to the actual understanding of it, we need to understand uh, the following. So when we have BJT transistors and we're biasing them, which means we're just setting them up in order to work in a specific fashion. If we have the base to emitter, and I guess I should go back here one minute, the BJT transistors, in case you don't remember, for those of you that may not be aware, you have three different um, inputs or three different leads coming from it. You have a base, you have a collector, and you have an emitter on both the NPN and the PNPs. Okay. Now, in order for the base to emitter junction, uh, it, or I should say, in order for the, the transistor, in this case, to act like a switch, which is what we want it to do, um, that's in the off position. It's also called cutoff. What we'll do is we'll have the base to emitter junction reverse biased, and we'll have the base to collector junction reverse bias also. When that occurs, what happens then is the switch, or the transistor acts like a switch that's off, meaning that it's open. OK, when we have the base to emitter junction for bias and the base to collector uh, junction for bias, then the switch acts like it's an on or meaning it's a closed switch and it allows current to flow through it. Now, I use a term of uh, or terms of reverse bias and forward bias. Now, some of you may understand what that means. Some of you may not. So let's go ahead and, uh, and make sure we all understand what that means. Now, when a junction is forward bias, okay, what that means then is that in this case here, we have forward bias. It means that we have a higher voltage potential on the PN than we do on the N end, okay? When it's reverse bias, it's exactly the opposite. It means we have a higher voltage on the N side of the junction and a lower voltage potential on the P side. Okay, so that explains how uh, we can reverse bias and forward bias a PN junction and therefore then helping to bias correctly our transistors so that we can get them to work in side of our 
uh, H bridge circuit. Now, before I move from this slide, there's one other thing I want to point out. So let's say we had some ideal uh, PN junction and we're looking at the current uh, to uh, IV curve is what we call it. Uh, what would happen is when the voltage and when the voltage is uh, less than uh, less than zero volts or equal, less than or equal to zero volts, what happened is there's no current that's allowed to uh, come through the actual PN junction. Now, the minute we get past, so slightly past zero volts, what happened is all the current is allowed to flow through the um, PN junction. Now, for the purpose of this explanation, we're going to pretend like all of this is perfect. Uh, and so we're dealing with um, perfect PN junctions, perfect transistors. And so we'll, we'll use this in order to explain everything as we go along. OK. All right. So now this is our more complicated uh, circuit here set up um, with our transistors in place of the switches. So what you'll notice is that the two transistors at the top here, these are both PNPs and the ones at the bottom are both PN junction or pardon me, NPNs. OK, both are NPNs. All right. Now, let's say on the base of both of these transistors over here, we have a one that's being inputted into both of these transistors. All right. So if we have a one being inputted and, and many of you may remember a one is equal to a logic level f uh, in, if we're talking about TTL logic, uh, logic level one is equal to five volts. So given that that's the case, what you'll notice is that that means that we have five volts coming into this P and notice it's zero uh, down here because we're at ground at this level. So what that means then is this B based emitter junction right here then is forward biased. Whereas now over on this side here, if we put in a zero, this is equal to voltage equals uh, zero or logic level zero. If we put zeros into both of these bases here, what that means then is that this junction here, the base to emitter junction, it actually has zero volts here and zero volts here, which means that this transistor is not turned on. All right. So since that's the case, then what this means is that so far, this one is definitely going to be turned off. All right. And so we can remove that from our circuit because it's equal to an open circuit. Remember, we're, we're modeling these as ideal transistors, okay, and ideal PN junctions. All right. So now that this is the case, then if we now look at uh, at the circuit as is, any voltage that's actually coming down here, then what this means then is since we have a resistive load that's in here. Uh, in this case, remember it's a motor, right? But I'm I'm uh, I'm modeling it as just a resistor. What that means then is that we'll have a little bit of voltage at this point, right? Because if we were to go from our VCC at the top here through this circuit or through this transistor, there has to be some voltage left here before we actually get back down here to ground. So because there's a little bit of voltage that's left here, what you'll notice then is that for this transistor, all right, that means then that this, uh, the voltage at this point has to be higher than the voltage at the base, which remember is zero. So that means this has been forward biased, right? So if this is forward biased, that means then there's a chance that this transistor is on. And if you look here, remember this is zero. And this is going to be some voltage larger than zero. So that means then that there's a higher potential at the P, lower potential at the N. So this transistor has to remain on. Okay, that's what it's indicating. This transistor has to remain on. So because this transistor has to remain on, then uh, we'll move over to this transistor over here. Remember, the current has actually gotten to this point here now. And so when we get to this point here, if we're modeling as ideal transistors, right, that means then that the potential 
at this point is going to be low, right? Because that's the last resistive um, component that we have here. And so this, this, the voltage potential at this end is going to be low. And remember, one is coming in here, which is five volts. So that means this is forward bias, right? And since this is forward bias, and also the voltage coming in here is one, the voltage at this end is zero, that means this is forward bias. So that means this transistor remains on, okay? So again, this transistor will remain on. Now over here, remember the voltage at this point is zero because we have no more resistive uh we have no more resistance in here so that means then if this is zero and this is one we have a higher potential at the n and a lower potential at the p which means now that this is in reverse bias so which means this transistor goes away all right so now you can see the voltage gets from here going through here through the resistive load going this way and then comes out that way and so you can see how the load in here will be charged again going in this way, okay? Now, if we do the opposite now where this is zero and this is one, again, we go back. This is one, this is zero, so that means this will be on. This is zero, this is zero, so that means this junction here will be off. And so because it's in reverse bias, all right? Because it's in reverse bias, this this cannot act as a switch that's in the in the on position. So therefore, then this transistor goes off. All right, because this is the case, then that means that there's going to be some voltage here, and it's higher than this. So this is forward bias. This voltage is going to be higher than zero. So this is forward bias. This PN junction right here is forward bias. So both of these are, uh, because of both of these junctions, this transistor remains on. If we go over to this side now, let's see, we have, um, we have a one at this location and we have a small voltage, or pardon me, we have zero voltage at this position because we're not modeling the transistor as having any sort of a resistive load. So then what this means is that there's a higher voltage potential here than here. And because there's a higher voltage potential at the N than there is at the P, that means then that this is in reverse. And so therefore this switch here cannot be on. So that one goes off. And so now the voltage goes through this way, or pardon me, the current goes from this to this transistor and then go in the opposite direction as the one we saw before through here and then to ground. So this explains how we can use transistors, BJT transistors, in order to create our H bridge. Okay, uh, so that concludes my explanation of how the H bridge uh, circuit operates. Um, my name is Dr. Clyde Letzum, in case I didn't mention that at the beginning, which I did not. Um, you can find out more information from me or about me from my website at ClydeLetzum.com. And please do uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for additional helpful, um, you know, hints uh, as it relates to electronics and physics.